I want to talk about data validation, which is about presenting data visually to help people find patterns in the data or better understand the data. We're actually using data validation a lot already. So I think if you use the Microsoft Excel, you create some bar charts or line chart before, and then you are doing data validation. So that's the kind of most common form. When people have been doing this for a long time, so I want to show you this map. Probably it was not called visualization or data validation before then. So this has happened in a cholera epidemic, I think it was in London. They plotted every case on a map. Each bar is one case, and that's where the address that was detected. By looking at the map, you can see there's certainly this kind of center of the disease happening, and they eventually located as well, which the water was contaminated, that would become the source of the cholera. And all these are kind of very easy to see retrospectively. But at the very beginning, when they look at just at the patient's record, they just couldn't figure out what was the problem for a very long time. One of the biggest changes now, lots of these visualizations are created automatically using computers. Obviously, in the 1844, sorry, 1854, it has to be done manually. But, and sometimes I think the 1854 one actually looks better. The other very common type of and visualization we see a lot now is the dashboard, which essentially just a collection of smaller or simpler visualizations. As we're getting more data and becomes more complex, or also depends on maybe the task we want to address becomes more complex. We need these more. The cholera map is a good example in terms of you showing one picture of the data set, and, and you get a very important insight after it. And, but in many cases, in the actual kind of real life, and it's maybe just a part of a bigger process, and which I would call sense making. So I think usually you, people would focusing on the analyzing parts, which what the data analysis or data science is, but all other parts are very important. And also sometimes you might have to get additional information to help you the process. I'm probably very biased, but I think we do sense making all the time. But I think it is at least true to say we just do this more often than you think. So the examples is like a planning holiday and find a place to live or maybe apply for a university degree. So in terms of difference from data analysis, so usually the goal is not well defined and the process is very open in the sense it's explorative and iterative. So the kind of a not very good analogy I use is kind of the maze. You have a clear goal, you want to get into the center of the maze or you want to find a crime in the tweets, you want to find a degree that you want to study. And, but you don't know the maze, so you have to explore, feel your way through. Hopefully, eventually you would get to the middle. And it's kind of explore process. You might have to repeat the same path a few times before you find the right way to the center. Okay, and so I have a second example, which is more kind of daily sense-making tasks. And here is say, find the best cameras for 500 pounds. So the context will be, we just had a newborn baby, so I think we should get a new camera. So my wife gave me 500 pound budget, so I need to say, okay, what the best we can get? And then you start doing some online research, you might try to see what experts say. And that in that process, you might come across some technical terms you never heard before. Then you might do more research to understand what those things are. For example, what are the micro forces or mirrorless or DSR, what does it mean? It's, you're probably not going to finish that in one session. You might say you spent an hour on it, you didn't quite, you made some progress, but didn't find the perfect camera yet. And you wait a few days until the weekend you want to continue. But then that's often, okay, how do you continue the process you did two, two days ago? And the typical thing is, so if you have a browser with open 20, 30 windows, that's kind of indication you are doing some sense making. Yeah, so this is kind of maybe the kind of more dry part. And I try to kind of unpack this diagram a little bit. Okay, the shoe box means the things you find interesting, you might want to go back to it and look at later. Or in the process, say doing the camera research, you might find an article recommending good cameras. Okay, you think that something you would say bookmark in a browser otherwise, and you put into your shoe boxes. And then the yellow one is evidence file. So 
this is more initially was kind of created more like an intelligence analysis context that's why the word you use but to me is kind of this text you highlighted in the browser that's mm -hmm. kind of nugget or information that's important this is usually after you look at the things you collected in the shoe box and the schematize you kind of starting to understanding the problem better and what is relevant to you say and does megapixel you use for or maybe the aperture is actually more relevant in the case you take baby photos because you need a fire, I say, faster shutter speed and that's when the aperture comes into play. And but these are things you kind of learn in the process as a result of your exploration and learning. And then the hypothesis part is where you can have come up with a few models, say it's within your budget, it all looks promising, you just need to do a more kind of detailed comparison between them. And finally the presentation is explaining not just the answers, but actually the process to someone else. Rather than say, have the person to do the same, go through the same process as you did. Most of it have to be done manually by the person. So that's something I'm hoping to support, develop something. So this is kind of a step towards that goal, which is a Chrome extension. And you can actually download it from the Chrome Web Store and play, but of the usual academic software quality. So what it does is it tries to visualize the way you have been exploring so far as a graph and rather than say just a list of in, you see usually see in history but also allow you to do other things for example you can highlight images or pictures which you find important and hopefully this will be better than say looking at the 20 tabs in a chrome window i call this a tree or a graph thing on the right hand side and it can also be a way help you to navigate back to any previous opened tabs yeah, sometimes even just being able to tell you that something you look at the before remind you in some way is quite useful. Obviously, this is kind of a simple example. When you get more tabs, it becomes more and more useful. For the particular ex an extension I just showed, so the currently kind of cover these first three boxes, but haven't quite go beyond, say, help people understanding a very complex topics. That's still very much done manually by the user. So the goal will be eventually cover the entire process. So certainly lots of work, quite a bit of work needed. So if anyone how happy to do some research or collaborate on this will be very useful. I'm very much interested to make more this one available to more people. And uh, as I mentioned, this is kind of typical academic software quality at the moment. So definitely needs a bit more software engineering uh, or maintenance. Stairs is red and football is green. Right? It's a terrible example because Hills. You wanted memory, you had to ask for it and release it yourself. So um, there are two primitives here. One's called malloc, and malloc says, give me some quantity of memory.